Welcome to the Underfire Bolt Action Club at Peculiar Game and Hobbies. Uh, learn to play uh, teaching game of bolt action, uh, which is a 28 millimeter World War II miniatures game. Uh, I am going to try and explain it as if you have not played miniatures games before. So if you have, I may overdo it. If you haven't, hopefully you will understand. Um, today we have American uh, paratroopers versus Germans uh, in the desert, which is not 100% historically accurate, but uh, the desert table was set up, so we're going to do that. Um, the U.S. A platoon uh, consists of a lieutenant, a couple of veteran paratrooper squads, a pathfinder squad, medium mortar team, a sniper team, some light artillery, and a M4 Sherman tank. So the Germans, uh, second lieutenant, and a couple of here infantry squads, a medic, a pioneer squad, a m couple of medium machine gun teams, a light mortar team, and a Panzer I tank. So before we get started, um, the key to understanding how bolt action works is understanding how a turn works. And the most important thing about a turn is when you go, which is determined in this game by order dice. For each unit you have in your your list, your army list, you have an order die. Um, the order die all gets put in a bag. We draw them out. Whoever's order die comes out gets to assign that die to one of their units. That unit takes its action, uh, whatever the order is, and then we draw another die and you go as your dice come out. So you don't know exactly when you're going to go. Each unit can only be given one order die a turn. So once all the order dice have come out of the bag, every unit's had a chance to go. That's the end of the turn. Um, the order dice have all the orders you can give a unit in the game. There are six orders, which is why order dice are convenient. Um, I'll go just gloss over the orders real quick, um, and we'll discuss them more as the game is played. Uh, so there's a fire order, which means your unit does not move. They just shoot. Advance order, you move and then you fire. Run, you get to move double time. Uh, you don't get to fire in that case. That is also the order you use to assault another unit. Um, assaulting is truly brutal in this game. If you're coming from other games, hand to hand doesn't mess around in bolt action. Um, ambush. Uh, which you basically set a unit to wait until a, another uh, an enemy unit moves into their line of sight. When that happens, they can declare to fire on that enemy unit. Um, rally, um, we'll, I'll talk about morale here in a second, but rally basically means you get to remove pin markers. And down mean is, a, is the only order you can take as a reaction. Uh, if you go down, you are harder to hit. So, morale um, is affected when you're shot at. You get something called a pin marker, like being pinned down, if you're familiar with the term. And the more pin markers you have, the harder it is for you to actually take an order. You have to make an order check, which involves rolling a couple of dice and trying to roll under a number based off the experience of your troops. Um, troops can be inexperienced. Um, regular or veteran um, and the veterans have the highest number they're trying to roll under so the veterans start at a 10 regulars start at a 9 and inexperienced start at an 8 I seriously doubt if there's any inexperienced troops running around on the table usually they're regular or veterans just in general um, so the scenario we're going to play today is the first scenario in the main rule book, which is, of course, I cannot remember the name now. Let me look that up real quick.
Just cut this part out. I'm awful. Um, no, seriously. No man's land. Here we go. Now I have it together. So one thing I forgot to do was open the scenario. I've got all my other notes and everything, and I forget the scenario. So essentially the scenario today is the armies have been facing off. At dawn, they're going to go after each other. So I will explain some more. The more of it is the guy set up. So essentially, they're going to roll a die, pick a long table edge. I think they've already done that. At least pick the table edge. Uh, roll a die, and then um, they declare which unit they're in and which which uh, <clears throat> which units they're going to put in reserve. Putting units in reserve basically means they just don't start out on the field at the beginning of the battle. They come on later with a morale check. This is important because this um, scenario has a preparatory bombardment, which means artillery is going to come in and um, damage or put pins on the units that are already on the board. Um, so... Um, or like if you got like a, like a, uh, like an is, is, is anybody leaving any, I, I mean you have to leave at least half years in reserve, up to half. You can leave, uh, you can leave nothing, but you can leave up to half. Yeah, I'm just going to keep the Panzer one in reserve. So the Panzer one is going to stay in reserve so it doesn't inadvertently get clobbered by artillery. And the Sherman is going to stay in reserve. So the tanks are in reserve. The infantry are going to be on the table. Okay, so now to set up, they will draw an order die, and the person whose order die it is sets up a unit on their side of the table. Their setup zone is 12 inches in from the edge of the table and all the way across. So as they're setting up, I will further discuss how this works but turn by turn. Um, Let's see, where are we at? Oh, okay. So the way, a, the way a turn sequence normally works, like I say, while they're setting up, you draw an order die, they take the order. Um, if they have pins, they have to make an order check. And then they execute the order. That's, that's each phase, and it goes through phases until the turn's over. Um, so terrain, we should discuss real quick while they're setting up. Um, there are several kinds of terrain. There's open ground, which is obviously any space where there's not stuff. Um, and that's easily moved through. You don't affect the, it doesn't affect their movement at all. Then there is rough ground, where infantry can't run. Uh, artillery and wheeled vehicles generally cannot go, and tracked vehicles cannot run. Rough ground would be like the rocks that Jacob is conveniently pointing out for us. Um, and then there are obstacles, which you also cannot run over, but they are things like the fences, uh, which would be an obstacle, or the fountain. Then there are buildings, and buildings can be entered in the game. There, there are robust rules for buildings, and as they go into the buildings, in fact, I've, somebody may already be set up in a building. As long as it's fully within their 12 inches, they're good to go. Um... So, and it is. So that's one of the keys about setting up inside a building. It has to be wholly within 12 inches. Obviously, tra vehicles can't go into buildings unless there's a real exception. Like it's, you're playing in the tractor factory on Stalingrad map or something. Um, there are no roads on this map, but roads allow vehicles double movement. Um, walls and the rocks provide hard cover. When we talk about cover for shooting, the stands of trees um, provide soft cover. They also block line of sight, so you, can, you can't see through a stand of trees, but you can see into or out of them. So if a unit is inside one of the stands of trees, they can be seen by a unit that is outside the stand of trees. Uh, we talked about troop quality. We talked about, oh, movement. <laughs> Let's talk about how far things can move. So when they start moving on, um, Infantry um, advance six inches, and when they run, it's 12 inches because it, it just doubles. Um, I think the only other thing we have here are tracked vehicles. So tracked vehicles can advance nine inches and get one 90-degree pivot, and they run 18 and no turning. So you better be pointed the way you want to go. 
And that is an up to, not that far. Um, so once they get set up and we start playing, we will start discussing how all of it works. Um, setting up is, is super key in bolt action um, because using terrain and staying under cover and not being caught out in the open is vital for keeping your troops alive to accomplish their goals. In this case, the goal is to drive the enemy off, which means that whoever uh, kills or chases away more of the enemy will win the game. Um, medium mortar is 1260. So it's got a lot of range. 1224. Yep, yep, yep. Um, one thing about this game is the weapons. While there are many different weapons used by the many different armies, um, they each each weapon type is the same. So a rifle acts as a rifle, a pistol is a pistol, no matter what kind of rifle or pistol it is. If it's an automatic rifle, like a BAR, it has its own rules, but that's because it's an automatic rifle. It's an assault. If it's an assault rifle, like a, a STG-44, um, it fires like an assault rifle. Light machine guns are things like a Bren gun or an MG-42, and a medium machine gun is like a MG-42 on a mount or the, uh, the um, Vickers gun the British use. Um, like I say, this is the Germans and the Americans, but there are, if they, if they were a major power in World War II and even some of the minor powers, they do have miniatures for them in bolt action. And even within each country's military, you can play several different things. Uh, as Americans, you can play as paratroopers, you can play as regular U.S. Army, you can play as the Marines. Um, the Germans have several different ways to play, um, early war, late war, SS, um, uh, Fallschirmjäger, uh, German paratroopers, um, desert, um, the, uh, the DAC, the, the Deutsche Afrika Corps. Um, then there's also Japan, which is the Imperial Japanese Army is pretty much what that is. Um, the Soviet Union, which, which has an, in, an incredible amount of stuff, and some of it is somewhat mind-boggling. Uh, the Russians did a lot of creative, uh, creative attempts to win the war. Uh, there's some, some really wild stuff, wild, wild technology the Russians use. Um, the Brits, um, and that's my normal, that's what I play, I play the Brits. Um, Range from your early your your early war Brits to your late late war Brits fighting in Europe, the Chindits in in Asia, Australians fighting in in the in, in the Pacific, South Africans, um, the the eight, the British Eighth Army, which would be fighting the DAK, um, and which which has a which actually is a recent one that's come out and has a bunch of models reflecting the. British Empire itself, seeing as you can play Austra Australians, Sikhs, South Africans, uh, Scots. Um, it's so there's a there's a ton of options for what to play. And the cool thing about this game is, even if you're not playing something a hundred percent historical, is that the the armies are balanced point wise to make them competitive against each other. So you can play um, British 8th um, Army against late war Germans and you're still going to be pretty close if you play with the same points. Um, and points are generally how we determine how, how big an army they are. 
this game is being played with 750 point forces which is kind of the mid-range for what we play here. We, we usually drift between 500 and 1,000 and sometimes go up to 1,250. Um, for the record, uh, if you're interested in bolt action, army starter boxes will get you about 1,000 points. So most of what you play can be, you, you can only put one unit in a building. Oh, really? Yes. So, look, um, it, everybody, like, has things, so sometimes you forget. Um, and if I forget or mess up a rule, please uh, don't crucify me. I know it's don't the Internet. In the um, you know, so don't, don't hammer me in the comments. We're, we're just trying to teach people how to play here, and if I'm not perfect, I am sorry. Right, and your your These are my pioneers. tanks will go down. So the Germans are setting up their last unit, the Pioneer unit. Pioneer unit has a flamethrower. Flamethrowers are devastating in bolt action. Um, people really don't like them. Uh, flamethrower is a devastating weapon, which is why it's not used often. Um, but in bolt action, it does get used a lot. Um, we... We have, our, our shop meta does involve a lot of flamethrower. Roper has three left. Uh, <laughs> so, so, yes, there, I, I know there have been armies fielded with multiple flamethrowers. Uh, I can't feel bad because I did it to Will. So, it, it, it does happen. Um, there, the, the U.S. sniper team just got set up. Sniper team has special rules. They do. They can set up anywhere on your half of the board, at least 12 inches away from one of his units. So if you want to set them up somewhere closer, like on it's not greater to be closer with on top of the roof here, you yeah, may be better there. Like you may that's you may be where spot. you want to be. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, that's a good spot. No, I was just saying like, uh, you, but you still get that option. So. Yeah, I was gonna say getting closer to some of your stuff. So since the weaponry is pretty similar um, as far as stats go, how do you differentiate? Um, the, the different armies. And each army has a few special rules. Um, I'll hit the highlights, the one that are going to show up the most here with the Germans and the Americans. The big one for the Americans, and it is in my opinion probably the strongest or one of the strongest special rules in the game, is the ability to not take any penalties when they advance and fire their rifles. Uh, normally that's a minus one penalty to hit. Americans can advance and fire rifles and automatic rifles at no penalty. Normally you can only do that with assault weapons like submachine guns and assault rifles. Um, also the, the second rule, it's not, there's not one here but it is a big one for the Americans, is their air observer can call in two airstrikes a game instead of one. So the Germans, the two biggies here that are going to show up are the Hitler's buzzsaw rule which means light and medium machine guns for a German army, fire one extra shot. One extra shot's a big deal. Um, and if the German sergeant is killed, so, uh, on a roll of two or better, another soldier steps up and takes over and they don't lose the sergeant, which keeps their morale up and their command ability still high. So we're ready to start our first turn, except you gotta do the preparatory bombardment, guys. So everybody's on the board. So now we're going to do a prep bombardment. So the way a prep bombardment works, um, this is where one of the British special rules matter um, because they get to roll twice, is each of the players will roll a D6. If they roll a two or better, a preparatory bombardment comes in and will hit the other player. If they roll a one, their side does not get a preparatory bombardment. So if the Americans would like to roll to see if they get a preparatory bombardment, Go right ahead. Yep. Preparatory bombardment will come in for the Americans. How about the Germans? No. no. Oh my goodness. Right. So, no. the way to do it, the way a preparatory bombardment works is each unit, as the bombardment comes in, will be 
threaten to either be hit or take a bunch of pins. So we'll work our way down the table and just do the preparatory bombardment starting with the, that unit that's being pointed to. What do you roll? Six. Six means it is a direct hit. The unit takes two pin markers and one automatic hit with plus three penetration value. So you should roll to see if you wound. Are they veteran or regular? What, what size template is this? It's not a template. Oh, it's okay. just a single hit. Oh, okay. Uh, these are regular. So you need a four no. to wound regular. No, well, it's plus three, so that's a five. Yeah, so, you one go so somebody goes away. So one of those guys was killed in the preparatory bombardment. The way you determine if somebody is wound, uh, takes a wound is um, if you roll higher than the number required for their experience. A veteran is a five, needs a five or better to, to remove a, a model. Regular is four or better. Oh, you savage. Oh, my goodness. So two pin markers and an automatic hit. So that is a guy is dead. How many, how many crew members do your machine gun have? Three. Well, that's good because you don't have to worry about them running away. So if a unit, this is a good time to talk about it as any. So if a unit loses half its members to a single instance of shooting, they will have to make a morale check to see if they run away. So what do you roll? Three. three. Takes one pin marker. That is two pin markers. Um, for the record, one does nothing. Two and three is a pin marker. Four and five is two. And six is a hit. So three is a pin marker. So the, the thing about a pin marker is that you have to take order checks to take orders. Right now, the Germans are being slowed down big time by racking up all these pin markers. Big time slowed down. The Americans, who are super fortunate that they did not take any uh, preparatory bombardment, because even though several of them are in buildings, buildings do not protect you from preparatory bombardment. Um, so that means that, that the Americans will get an order die, which counts as a, a victory point in this case. Um, because this, this particular game is determined by the number of units you eliminate, nothing. And since that is a unit, it is eliminated, it is, there's now one less order die in the bag for the Germans, and the Americans have it as one victory point. To win a game, you have to, at the end of the game, you have to have at least two, two victory points more than your opponent. So, in this case, um, he's, he's got a head start. Um, now, so we're gonna start the first turn. So we've drawn an order die. That's the first thing that happens. It's an American order die. So now the American player can give an American unit an order. So what order will you give what unit is the question. My order die is going to go as a fire order on my sniper team. Okay, so he's giving a fire order to his sniper team. Now before we resolve this, let me explain how sniper teams work, and then we'll deal with the shooting part of it. Um, and once we get more explained, we'll speed up as we go through the game. So, a fire order means they're not moving, they're firing. A sniper has a special ability that says if you're going to fire them, you can use them as a sniper, which means they ignore all modifiers to hit except for a small team, and any pins they have, or if he's missing his spotter. The important thing is the range is anywhere from 12 to 36 on the sniper shot, so he has to be within range. He has to declare before he measures. Right. So you don't get to pre-measure in bolt action. You have to guess. If you're wrong, you miss. So the way, the way you shoot is for, for each shot, for each shot you get to roll a die, in this case a sniper will roll a single die, they're making sure they're within 24, perfectly, perfectly in range. So now um, if you will roll a die to hit, you need a three or better because, so one, 
once you get a hit, it is, all, it is always a pin. Um, we'll discuss modifiers more when something that's not a sniper fires. So they're veterans. It requires a five to wound. Does not wound. Now, had he wounded, a sniper does something very unique. It's an exceptional wound. Normally for an exceptional wound, you have to roll a six to wound followed by a six, which means instead of the owning player of a miniature picking which one goes, the opposing player, the, the person that fired the shot, gets to pick who goes, which could easily have taken out that uh, machine gun team. So we'll draw another die and probably see about movement, I would be willing to bet. Because maneuvering is important, and I feel like the Germans need to maneuver. So it is a German die. So. So another fire order to a was that a medium machine gun? Yeah. Now this has a pin on it. So I'm not sure. Are you? You are absolutely within the the firing arc of it. Yeah. So, under normal circumstances, you start it at three is the number you need to hit. Let me go over the hit modifiers real quick before we roll and figure this out, the possibility. So, if you're at point blank range, which is within six inches, which is obviously not, it's plus one to hit. So, actually, you would only need a two to hit. If the fire has pin markers, each pin marker adds a minus to hit. So, if they had two pin markers, instead of needing a three, you would need a four or five. Uh, long range, which you are at long range, is a minus one to hit. Um, if the fire is inexperienced, it's minus one to hit. If you've moved, unless you're Americans, it's minus one to hit. Uh, if your team weapon only has one crew, which is not the case, that would be a minus one. If the target is down, that's a minus two to hit. If the target's a small unit, which is two or less, that is going to be a minus one to hit. Right. First, you have to pass your order test. Soft covers a minus one. Hard covers a minus two. Let's see if you can pass your order test. So he needs to pass his order test. Is it a veteran? He's got a pin. Veteran. So it starts at a ten. So nine. nine. But I'm within six inches of my second lieutenant, so it'd be still on. Ten. Right. So your lieutenant gives you a morale bonus. It gives you a plus one. So he needs a ten or less. Seven. So he got a seven. Drop. When you succeed, you lose one pin marker. He only had one, so he has no pin markers now. He can actually do the order. Had he failed, had he rolled higher than a 10, the machine gun would have gone down and nothing would have happened. Now the American player has the option for his, his gun to go down. He's not not going to go down. So six, shots, so six shots, long range. Is there no cover there? No, he's not within. So the way you determine if, some, if a unit is in cover is if you can... If half or more of the unit is in cover. So right now he's hitting on fours with six shots. Going down can save a unit and is something that a lot of people don't want to do because it means they can't do anything uh, with that unit that turn. But if you still have the unit for the next turn, it's actually more important sometimes than not. So now that that unit is down, that won't do anything but be down this turn, but that machine gun now needs sixes to hit. And we didn't get one. And there are no sixes, so because he went down, he missed. If he hadn't gone down, I saw like three or fours. There were like four fours in there. It would have been bad. Um, so that is basic shooting. <laughs> you sometimes, you, yeah, the, you, you fool yourself into thinking there's more cover than there is. Right. Uh, it turns out he was wide open um, and very, very nearly just ate a lot of lead. All right, so I'm going to try to fire my uh, light artillery, or medium artillery, or light? Light, light artillery. I'm going to give them a fire order. At something they must be able to see. And it has to be in their front, like, arc. And I am going to target 
And I'm going to target that uh, infantry squad behind Here? the machine. Yeah, your sure. engineer squad, I think is what that is. Yep. Right, I'm going to target your engineer squad. Okay, um, so are you going to try to direct fire, or are you going to, because you can see them, you can still indirect fire. If you indirect fire, you will definitely need a six, because it's just like firing a mortar. If you direct fire, we'll have to calculate their cover and stuff, because they have a team between you, so that's at least soft cover from, where the, from the machine gun team. Um, we will try to direct fire. Try to direct fire, so you are... What's the direct fire range? It's, this, it's this, the, the light... Uh, um, the direct fire range for light artillery is 48. Okay, yeah, you're definitely in range. He's in range. He's in long range. Yeah, yeah, always good to measure, so you have an idea. 36. Um, most of that unit, you can see, can you, you can see that unit, but they all essentially have cover. So long range cover, light cover. So you need a five, unless you would like to go down. Uh, just live dangerously. All right, You're going direct fire the light artillery. Swing in the breeze. So he missed. No consequences. If he had hit, it would have been a template that might have killed a lot of dudes. Um, I'm sure we'll deal with the template with these mortars and these artillery pieces uh, at some point. Oh, excellent. So now this German unit is getting ready to run. They can move. They have to pass an order test. Um, Normally a nine for regular, one pin. So they're regulars, one pin. They need eight. So six, they will lose their pin. Now they can move up to 12, but they can't move into rough terrain. Um, although we don't treat the woods as rough terrain necessarily, so they could move into the trees. He may just want to stay behind the trees so people can't see him. Because the trees do block line of sight unless you are in them. But then they give you light cover if you're in them. So there's there's a kind of a trade-off for giving up the line of sight. You can shoot out of them and still have cover. And so that's a run move. So the Germans get to activate again. That's the, the interesting thing about drawing the dice out. Uh, you never quite know when you're going to go, and sometimes you have to go when you don't want to go. We're going to run these. So the Germans two pins in their regular. are going to run again. They have two pins, which means they will, they're regular. They will need a seven or less. No. They got, they got an eight. Since they did not pass their order test, they don't lose any pins, and they go down. And that is the end of their turn. And it is Germans go, Germans go, Germans go. So now he's going to run the engineer unit. They have a pin or two pins? One pin. They're within there. One pin. They made it. They made their morale check, so they will lose a pin. They have one pin. They lose it. And now they will be able to run. Right. Now, you need a one-inch space to be able to fire past your own guys. Um, so one thing about where that Pioneer unit is, is he is blocking the line of fire in certain areas for that German infantry unit behind it. Uh, it's important to point that out uh, so, so folks know that. Um, They're cowards. We don't care about them. So <laughs> next order die. More Germans, <laughs> wow. All of the Germans. Now you can put your tank down to to, to make this, yeah. to, to cycle through the dice. When, when you have anything in reserve, as you draw order dice, because you still draw the order dice for what you have in reserve, you can put it down and that will be its entire turn because reserve things cannot come in until the second turn. So right now all the tanks can do in reserve is stay down. So they move 12 or 6 in rough terrain because they're fixed. Oh, no, it's light mortar? Yeah, light mortar. Oh, they're not, they're not fixed. I thought it was a, I saw the big base, thought it was a medium yeah, mortar. Yeah, yeah, well, I use it as both, so I 
to stick an air guy on there when I want it to be a medium. Fair enough. Fair enough. The Brits come with so many light mortars, I don't have a problem feel, f f light mortar teams. <laughs> Honestly, I just stole a uh, light mortar from my Japanese and put it on my guy. Yeah, I got, good. I've got light mortars everywhere. So now an American die. The Americans get to go again. What are the Americans going to do here? Um, I actually think the Americans are going to bring on my tank. Can't do it until the second turn. Second turn. Second turn. So you're not going to bring on your tank. You're going to move or shoot? Um, or move and shoot, which is an option. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, actually, this is a good time to do that. I'm going to use my lieutenant to snap to action my... Uh, pie, uh, what are they? The uh, oh, yeah. Pathfinders. Pathfinders. So he's going to try to snap to action my Pathfinders. Okay. If he doesn't have any pins or anything, he can take his order. So... What the Americans are going to do is your officer, your lieutenant, can do a thing called snap to action. If a unit is within its command range, which is six inches for lieutenants generally, you could actually pull a second die out of the bag. This allows you to control some of the order die draw and do what's called snap to action. As long as your lieutenant can complete his, his order, pass his order test, and actually take an order, he can give another unit an order. So in this case, the Pathfinders are being given an order to run. run. Um, the lieutenant himself does not have to take the same order as the order he gives the, the Pathfinders. The lieutenant can actually just go down or crawl through the window into that house with a run action. Um, you have to run to get into a building because otherwise you could advance in and shoot out of the building and that is would be straining things rules wise. And he is going to run from my building. Okay. Now he can run around to the door or he can crawl through that window. You can uh, in bolt action a unit can enter a building through any opening of window size or bigger. So in that case there's a window in the back of that building. He could have just crawled in the window. Um, also within the building the lieutenant can still give snap to action orders. It just has to be to a unit that is within six inches of one of the windows he can see out. I'll, uh, or, or the door, because any opening you can see out of in a building. I'm going to rally my LT. Yeah. All right, so the German's LT is going to rally because he has, what, two pins on him? Yeah, I got it on an eight, so D6 plus one. Yes, sir, rally allows you to remove D6 plus one pins. He removed four pins. He only had two. Um, rally is an order you use when you're just pinned down. Um, I think... Uh, I'm going to rally this as well. Okay. Germans are going to rally again. You rally at your full morale. Lose D6 plus one. Wow, that would have been, that would be seven if he'd had that many. Um, the other thing about pin markers that's important to understand is if you get as many pin markers on a unit as their initial morale, so if it's a regular, if they have nine pin markers on them, they will run away and effectively count as destroyed, and you will give up a victory point should it be uh, a game like this where it's victory points for destroying a unit. So, um, so pass him the first one. Um, so basically the only dice in the bag are American dice now. So he will give each order one at a time. Um, normally we just go, hey, you got three left, and just they, you, they give the rest of their orders and call it good. Since we're demoing, let's just make sure we put orders on people. You have to run out into a building. You, you can't advance out of a building. Of a building. You have to run into, but you can run or advance out. but you cannot run out of a building into another building. That's the other thing that's important. You can't go from building to building like that. You have to be out at least a turn. No one runs building to building IRL, dude. I, I mean, uh, I understand that that is a very common thing in, in actuality, but for game purposes, uh, they, they don't let you do that. 
I mean, he could have fired out of the building if he could have seen anything, because he has uh, a door and two windows, and you can fire two weapons out of each opening, so that would be six weapons out of that squad could fire out of the building. Yeah. That'd be interesting. All right, that's fair. So he advanced, so if he can see something with that unit, which he can, which he certainly can, because even though all those guys are laying down, you can treat them as though they're standing yeah. up. Yeah. Um, so he can see, what are you firing at? So they are going to be firing Pioneers. Pioneer. The Pioneer Squad is over half behind the tree, so they'll have soft cover. Yep. Um, one, it's our first time here, so for your LMG it'll be moved. For the LMG it matters, but everything else it's it doesn't matter about moving. So let's start out by firing your your light machine gun. Okay. Yep. Um, because that way we'll figure out the penalty. So since he moved and it isn't a rifle or a or a assault or a um, automatic rifle. It's not long range because you were within fifteen. So it's minus one for moving, not long range, minus one for light cover. So he would need a three, four, fives to hit. So there's one hit, so that unit takes a pin. So let's figure out the rest of them before we worry about wounds. Um that no, no, doesn't no, matter no, to, okay. to hit. So how many rifles do you have to fire? Well, he's got one bar, so that's two shots. I got one BAR and that. So let's figure out the BAR next, because the BAR is BAR and... Sh three, no movement, and it's within half range, so it's 15. Okay, uh, well, but it's soft cover, so... Soft cover. So it's hitting on fours. No hits for the BAR. No hits. Now the rifles. And I've got three rifles. Uh, well, you yeah, have loader BAR, one, so three rifles. Three rifles. Three rifles at long range. Yep. Long Moving range. doesn't matter. Long range is minus one, and right. soft cover is minus one. So you are at fives with the rifles. So two hits total. Yeah, yeah. Now they are veterans. Yep. So he needs fives to wound. Reroll the cocked one. That is a six. Now, because he rolled a six to wound, he gets to roll it again. If he rolls another six, it is an exceptional shot, and he would get to choose who he killed in that squad, which in this case would probably be the flamethrower guy. But since he did not get an exceptional hit, the German player gets to choose who dies, and it's probably just a rifleman. I'm not shocked. So, the next American die. What's the next American unit going to do? Where is the next American unit? In that house, okay. And then your tank will go down, and we will put all the dice back in the bag. It'll be in turn one. They are going to go down. We stay in the building, and then the tank goes down. So, Everybody, all the order dice go back in the bag now. That's the end of the first turn. At the end of the first turn, the Americans have one victory point. The Germans have none. You should have eight overall. Um, now, during the, now between turns, normally, if there was any observers, artillery, or or air, you would check to see if the artillery or the air attack came in. Uh, none of that's happening. We don't have any of those, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, let's see. That is the end of the turn, so now we will start drawing dice, and the, the process goes over again. So the Germans have the first die. Now, as the game goes on, that first die coming out of the bag becomes more and more important. Uh, usually by the second or third turn, it's... Uh, pretty vital, actually, um, and usually people are clamoring for that first die. Um, right, um, everybody usually wants it. So, since we're playing an actual game, sometimes it takes us a moment to, to go to the next thing. We're not just demoing for demo purposes, where this is a real game, they're trying to do some stuff here. So, we're gonna try to do 
Uh, oh, I see what you're th wondering. Oh. Okay. Okay. So he's going to take an order check, try to advance his pioneers. Yep. So I need a nine or higher, or nine or less. Sorry. Nine or less. Got it on a nine. Ooh, made it barely. They lose it. <laughs> now they will advance six inches, and then he is going to hope he is within six inches of. Well, I'm gonna hope I'm within twelve. Within twelve. Okay. Uh, so a bunch of SMGs. So he's going to try to use SMGs in range. His flamethrower will only be in range if he's within six. He's not going to be within six. So he won't fire his flamethrower. Um, because if you fire your flamethrower, no matter whether you hit or miss, you have to roll to see if you burn up your fuel. He's he's not going to burn up his fuel right now. And we're going to just try and shoot up the boards over there. So they are actually in soft cover because of the fountain. Right. So only five of the SMGs are in range. Five of the SMGs are at long range. So be on five. So they are on fives, but they have two shots each. So it's ten shots needing five. Would you like to go down? No. This may hurt. So the Americans have decided not to go down. Oh my goodness, three hits. So definitely takes a pin. Three possible wounds. And those are vets, so I need fives. Yes, needs fives. Two, two possible, possible extraordinary hits, or exceptional hits, nope. I should say. Nope. But two, but two guys die. And since that was less than half the squad, no check needs to be made by and, the Americans. And with Veteran paratroopers, you actually have the stubborn rule. So, so they don't have to make a check. Like, test on their, uh, they test on their full morale. Yeah. So the so the paratroopers have the special stubborn rule. They test on their full morale when they make morale checks for, for running away. But not for order checks. You you actually take you still have to make an order check. And this is the second turn, so you can bring in your tank if you would like to. Yeah. Tempting. Bring it in. All right. We're going to test it again. I need that machine gun team gone. We're going to give my sniper team a fire order, and we are going to target that machine gun team. Sniper's going to fire on the same machine gun team we fired on earlier. We had determined that that requires a three. That is a hit. So need now five. need a five to wound. If the sniper wounds, we'll nope, that. just a pin. If the sniper wounds, it will actually kill that machine gun team because what a sniper can do on a team weapon like that um, is actually kill the, the, the gunner and it will wreck the gun and get rid of that team. Uh, it doesn't work on artillery, but on team weapons, it does work. So mortars, machine guns, that kind of a thing. All right, and indirect fire uh, ignores cover. I yeah, it's just on a six, side. and yeah. then it'll take down for each turn you shoot. Right, so so if the mortar fires indirect, um, which it totally can, um, you, the first turn you attack, you need a six. You have to range in indirect fire weapons. What would you like to fire at? I'm going to try to fire at machine gun. So this one here? So when you fire, if you get a six, you've ranged in. No, doesn't hit. Next turn you need a five as long as your mortar and the machine gun team do not move. Okay. If you hit, you are ranged in and only need a two to hit in future turns if the mortar and the target unit do not move. I'm going to place this team on ambush. Okay. So ambush means if anything moves out into the firing line of that machine gun, he will get to interrupt and shoot that unit, uh, which probably means those pathfinders may not be going very far. I'm going to try to bring on the Panzerkampfwagen on. So the Germans are going to try to bring their tank on. So the way the way this works is 
you make a morale check for your tank at minus one. Yeah, minus one. So he needs an eight or less to come on. Nope. That is a nine. He does not come on. You give it a down order, and it stays out this turn. So the the Panzer one didn't want to come come out and play. And uh, it turns out that a Panzer one is not much of a match for a Sherman. <laughs> so uh, so the Panzer's like, you know, I'll wait a minute on this one. So now the Americans have a die. What are the Americans going to do? Um, so the same thing. It's a order check at minus one. That's a six, which should pass it. So the American tank can move onto the table. It has to have at least an advance at any point on the American side of the board. Nine. And you get one 90 degree turn. So, I mean, should you need to turn. But you're coming on from the edge of the board, so just point the tank the way you want it to go is probably the... That would be my recommendation, just as a... Unless you got to move around something. Un unless there's so much stuff, you got to move it around. But other than that, point tank in direction and go. This could be painful. So... The Sherman has moved onto the board with an advance. It is eligible to fire. Um, so it has, so this particular Sherman has, has a uh, 75 millimeter medium anti-tank gun. It has a coax MMG, which means it can either fire the tank gun or the medium machine gun in its turret. It has a forward facing hole mounted medium machine gun and a pinnel mounted medium machine gun. To use the pedal mounted medium machine gun, you would have to get out of the tank and fire it, which means the tank would become open top for a turn. You probably don't want to make the tank open topped. It doesn't seem like a horrible idea when you're all the way back there. It's maybe not the worst idea, but it does it's make really you... It's a bad idea if infantry is anywhere within 12. Right. Then, then you're going to yield the you, you don't want to do that if there is infantry within 12 or there is indirect fire weapons that can so see you. Um, but that is three medium machine guns whose range is 36 and have five shots apiece. Yeah, I'm going to three medium machine guns in the Nothing I could do. So they're going to stand there and take it. I believe they are at long range. Uh, let's see. No, they are short range. They're at short range, which means he has 15 shots, oh, needing wow. threes. No, he moves, so fours. So 15 shots needing fours. This is probably going to basically erase that unit. Seven hits. Need fives to wound. <laughs> Pardon me. Possibility for an exceptional. Nope. One guy dies to all that fire. I hope they were wearing their brown underwear. Because that is kind of terrifying. My underwear is brown. And that one even made so now that tank is open topped until it's next turn. Um. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm trying not to cough directly into the mic. If I do, I apologize. Yes, going to take another shot at the same squad with the unit behind the fountain. So, uh, machine gun uh, is going to be short range. And, uh, yes. So, I need right there three. Well, you have to pass an order check first. Okay, so uh, they are veterans, so not nine? Yep. Yes. Nine. So, they pass it, they lose the pin, so now you need threes to hit with the machine gun. Uh, threes as well. Two more hits, of course. So four hits. And then a rifle. Which needs like a three. Yeah, that'll hit. So five hits. Yep. 
So five hits total, need fives to wound. This is why veterans can be really good, because they can be hard to kill. Oh my goodness. Um, that's three hits with two chances for exceptional. One exceptional. So the flamethrower has now passed on, as well as another rifleman. And a third guy. So three guys lost. He has four guys left. That means they do not have to take an order check to see if they run away. But they got lit up something fierce. Um, I'm amazed they were still there after the tank fired, to be honest with you. Um, well, that's what they're there for. All right, direct fire. The light howitzer on to your machine gun team. Um, we'll have cover from the engineer or from the pioneers. And then did we? It was on a what last time? I mean, he's direct firing, so it doesn't matter. Uh, direct fire. It was wasn't long range. I believe we figured. Or was it? Because it would be, is it more than 24? Because it's 48. So he's long range and has light cover, so you need a five. That is a hit, so that is a two, two inch. Two, uh, There's already a dead guy, so you just roll for the two guys. So roll for the two guys, because you'll definitely hit them. Normally, the light houser uses a two inch template. They're dead. <laughs> And he rolled two sixes, and they are all kinds of dead. So that destroys that light machine gun. And an order die for that light machine gun will come out of the bag. And now the Americans have two victory points. Which now you have a lead that if the game ended, you would actually win instead of it being a draw. Because you have to win by two. It's kind of like uh, ping pong. Um, <laughs> That is the ranging marker. So, do you do you move those pathfinders out or what? Come out from behind the rock. <laughs> Let's see. There is not an option where the machine gun can't see you. Whichever side you come out of behind that rock. Yeah, but one he doesn't get cover from the trees. Right, there is that too. You know what? Can't win without fighting. We're going to advance the guys out. At what point during their advance would you like to shoot at them? So or just wait till they finish advancing and then shoot them? Yeah. Fair enough. You can determine during an advance when you shoot at them. So if he could get from one rock to the other with like a run, he could say, halfway between the rocks, stop them. I want to fire my machine gun at them because he's set on ambush. An ambush is set off by moving. It has to be movement. So he's going to activate his ambush, which I'm, nobody's surprised at all about. This is how I use medium machine guns. I put them in ambush and shoot things that wander out in front of me. So, we, so what the Germans were trying to do was prevent the Americans from advancing and by just the deterrent of maybe being shot with a machine gun. The Americans apparently are not afraid of the machine gun. Those are pathfinders. They don't give a the pet. Well, they are pathfinders. That's true. All right. So 21. So that is long range. Um, but other than that, no other models. Nope. Just long range. So you need fours. So two hits. Two hits need fives to wound, I think. No wound, so merely a pin. So now they have a pin added to them, but they've already been given an order, so they don't have to make an order check. The downside is now they're firing at minus one to hit because of the pins. Right. So they are going to attempt to fire at this, this squad here. Yeah. And okay. we'll go uh, down. All right. So 12. Yeah, because more than half of them don't have cover, so you're not in cover. So he's got a rifle. So two rifles that are going to be at short. So I've got two rifles at short and five SMGs at long. Okay, so let's start with the two rifles. That'll be the easiest. 
they're short, they're down, there's no cover, moving doesn't matter for you, so, and you have a pin, so that's three, so you need a six. No hits. So now how many submachine guns do you have? Five. Five, so that's ten shots, long range, um, down, and a pin, so you need, so he needs sixes, but he needs seven, so the only way to hit is if he rolls sixes, picks them up, rolls them again, and gets another six. Um, we generally refer to that in our group as super sixes. Um, so he, uh, he basically just took some machine gun fire for nothing. So, uh, we're going to try and fire the light mortar onto your path. Okay, they have to be more than 12 away and less than 24. I uh, think you're good. A light mortar. It'll only hit a couple guys anyway. Well, he's got to hit first, so he needs a six. So the light mortar misses. Had it hit, it would use a, a one inch template. Is it a one inch or two inch? Yeah, one inch. One inch. A one inch template and for each guy covered by the one inch template he would get to attempt to wound. Um, so we will hopefully have something with a template we can show you here pretty soon. Because um, we haven't shown you a template you yet. Your lieutenant and your squad so the my building. squad in the building is going to run. You can run out of the building. That is 100% a thing you can do. <laughs> Remember to leave at least one inch between units for identification purposes. Luckily, those ones are paying attention. <laughs> well, the rule is you need to have an inch between units to keep yeah, them separate. Yeah. So plus, you don't want to have them within an inch so you can fire. So. Right. You also want yeah firing lines because you can't fire through your own units. Um, then just unless you can't possibly hurt them. So you can fire rifles right past a tank because all you're going to do is chip some paint. But you can't fire rifles right past your yeah, lieutenant because because it turns out and you can't fire your tank past your rifles because a tank will definitely end a rifleman. This one, I'm going to move up my lieutenant. Uh, he'll take a so the German lieutenant is going to run. He is running to help provide a morale boost to the that extraordinarily damaged unit, I'm guessing. And the other guys that have taken a few pins too, but mostly the one that's taken a ton of pins from being hit. Um, we're going to try to... So uh, we're gonna, we're gonna try and uh, German die. We'll try to run. German Germans are going to run. We need a regularly a nine, two pins down to seven, but within six of our second lieutenant, so it's back up to eight. So. No. The Germans fail their morale check despite the lieutenant being there and they go down. So you got one more. Yeah, and my lieutenant is going to go down. Okay. So the last American die, the lieutenant stays down in the building to protect himself. The dice will go back in the bag. That will be the end of turn two. Um, turn three is coming up. Once again, there's no, nothing being called in, no strikes, none of that can be done. So it will now be strictly dice at the end of turn two. The Americans are ahead, two victory points, two done. I'm your first die. No, you don't. <laughs> and everybody wants the first oh. die. Oh, it's the Germans. Germans get the first die of round three. Uh, well, that may be true, but... It, you're probably better off than if he had the first die. <laughs> Would be my guess.
So are you going to take the, the, the easiest oh path? I'm just going to... I'm just going to... There appears to be a hang up at German High Command. Yeah. I'm just going to fire this unit at this so the German, the German here unit that is behind the palm trees, mostly behind the palm trees, is going to fire at the Pathfinders. Is this still going down? Uh, what all you got in that unit? Uh, LMG, and then the rest of rifles. And this guy's an SMG, so he's probably, eh, he might be. There. He may be in range. Now, Pathfinders are lucky. Pathfinders are going to stay out. Oh, these guys are crazy. Pathfinders are not going down. All right, so... Yep, nine inches to the SMG, so long range on the SMG. They got two shots at the SMG. And then six rifles. So two shots at SMG, six shots with rifles, and, and five, five shots, shots with the light machine gun, all of which are in short range. Well, no, the, the rifles, there might you don't think the rifles are? I think the rifles are. The rifles are all right in there. Yep. 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 They're all. They're all good. Okay. So, rifles are good. Light machine gun will be good in that case, as so will. Because it's long range. Yes, that needs force. That is correct. So one hit there. Uh, and then rifles are. Threes. Three hits. And then LMG is kind of back. Might want to check, but I still think you're within yeah, short. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. So also threes. Also threes. That is eight hits. But now we need fives. But need fives on those. Uh, four. And I guess two exceptional. Possibility. You should roll those. Dud. So just four. Okay. So because that unit lost more than half its, its men in one go, the Pathfinder unit is going to have to make a morale check to see if they stay or flee. Now, they still test on their base, though. Normally, normally for this, you would, your pins would subtract from your morale, but since American paratroopers are stubborn, they get, to taste from their, they get to test from their full morale. And they rolled a four, and they pass their test and don't run away. So that unit is still there. So the Pathfinders will advance test, yeah, testing on minus two, so they need a eight or less. Seven. Seven. They lose a pin, so now they're at minus one for whatever they do. And I'm going to ditch your yep. artillery marker. Right, because you're not zeroed in because you're moving. So, point blank, need twos. Um, one. Yep. That is five hits, needing fours to wound. Uh, that's three. three wounds with two possible exceptionals. No exceptionals, three guys. So the Germans take a pin and lose three of that unit. Not decisive, but impressive. So the next die comes out, Germans. I will try to bomb your homies back here with my light one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yep, gonna need a six for sure. Oh, that 
that is a hit. So now we will bring in the template. It is a one inch template. So there's the one inch, the inside of that. The rules for the template is to put it over as many guys as you can. I think it's just three. And actually, let's look. I think we might be able to get four in there. No. He has them set up no just, what, no matter how you move it, he can only get three guys. So you'll have three attempts to wound. All right, so. Now, does this have any bonus to penetration? Yeah, I'm sorry, I forget what it is. Light mortar has a, yeah, it's, so it's, it's a plus one penetration. So normally he'd need fives because they're veterans, but because of the plus one, he only needs fours to wound. So there's two wounds. And it's an HE, so it the HE cannot do an it can't do an exceptional, so he just gets to lose two guys. And take take a D2 pin. So a D2 would be you roll a die and basically yes. high or low. So it takes two pins. You're a good boy, light mortar. <laughs> so it's interesting because on one flank things are looking bad for the Germans, on the other flank things are looking rough for the Americans. It's kind of interesting. We'll see if something shakes loose here. American die. What would the American like to do? Um, see if I can save my pathfinders by. No matter if anything. Huh. Well, no. Dang it. I know exactly what I would do. So the the squad the squad behind the fountain the squad behind the fountain is going to shoot at the exposed engineer team. The engineer team goes down because they would like to still be there after the shooting. Still going to be pretty still going to be kind of iffy, but do what you can. So you need fives. Because you start at three and going down is a minus two, so you need fives. Um, okay, so machine gun. Hit. One hit from machine gun, so they take a pin. The uh, VAR. Two shots, need fives. Nothing. And the rifle. Needs five. Nothing. So one hit. No, no wounds. So, the, the, so the American sniper team is going to fire at the lieutenant. Um, needs a um, four because they don't ignore a small team. So it needs a four. Okay. You're a good lad. Me. All right. Let's try this again. So the Panzer one is going to attempt to advance onto the table, and it fails to again and goes down. Uh, we're going to assume it's stuck in some soft sand. Um, it seems to be having it's, it's having trouble getting here for some reason um, through a track or something. You just can't get it there. So it is now the Americans die. The American die. My mortar team is going to try to hit that machine gun team again. So I need a five. Needs a five because you fired once before. Not roll the order die. Yeah, rolling the actual die is six. That is a hit. That's going to hit all three. They have to be within an inch. Right. So they have to be within an inch of the. Yeah. It's it's. You would get a two inch. But or, so well, which no, would these be that? Veterans, that's a medium. So medium is plus two. Me, oh, that's a medium mortar. Medium mortar is uh, two inch. It is plus two. So you'll need uh, three. So anything but one or two. And you gotta roll two more. Oh. Yeah. yeah three, you hit all three dudes. So uh, two. Two of them. Oh, and. Uh, how many 
It is D3 pins, so two pins. Whoop. Minor earthquake. I leaned over and hit the uh, hit the camera stand. So minus two, so down to an eight. Yes, yeah, so he has to make see if he make it. he makes it. He doesn't run away. So they'll be there. So there's one dude manning that machine gun, which means he will now be minus one to hit because it's only a single man on a team fired weapon, and you will now hit with twos on the mortar. Because once you zero in with an indirect fire weapon, as long as the indirect fire weapon doesn't move and its target doesn't move, you hit on twos, which is brutal. So another American die has come out. Down will matter. It will. We'll have the hits for HE. If you're down, down half hits for HE and there's minus two to hit for direct fire stuff. Yes, you did. You moved the path. So the pathfinders are in the way of the other troop. Yeah, they really are. The troop is going to advance. Okay. United. So the Sherman will advance and. And it is going to open up with all of its machine guns that are already loaded. These guys? Yep. Okay. So firing at the. Okay. Not within six. Nope. You are at, just so everybody knows, uh, call it eight. So the tank's at eight inches away. Um, Fifteen shots need sixes. Uh, Holy. One, two, three, four, five sixes. Five sixes out of 15 shots. Spectacular marksmanship. Now you need five. Now I need five. Need fives. Only one out of all that. They do take another pin. Those pathfinders just don't want to go. <laughs> so the Americans again. So that would be long range, indirect. You can't see them, I don't think. No, I think you're too far behind the building. Oh, yeah, okay, I am a little far behind the building. Oh, yeah, I didn't know. I just assumed you could just because of the yeah, way they couldn't. Okay, well, never mind. They're going to have to fire it. So, so the howitzer will. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, what size is it? Is it a two inch on a light mortar? Light ha it's a light howitzer. A light howitzer is a two inch template, which be I believe half. will hit three half is still going to be two because it yep. rounds up. So two with yeah. plus two? Uh, no. Um, at plus, yeah, plus two. Yeah, two at plus two. So two guys, boom. And some amount of pins. D3 pins. Three pins. Three pins, what's the total pin number on there? They will have to roll a three or 
So to not run away that and be destroyed, that unit, four, that unit has to roll a four or less. They did not, they did not roll a four or less. That the Pathfinders are finally destroyed. The Americans acquire that die, and the Pathfinders held their position for as long as could be expected. They uh, they fought hard for the uh, for the fatherland. Um, So, American die again, which is going to have to be, I believe, either the lieutenant or that infantry unit. That's the only thing this went right for. <laughs> <laughs> the the Germans have been having probably more trouble than one would expect. Especially with the tank not showing up. Oof, that's been run. You know what? They're going to attempt to run. Okay. Um, so I am at a two pins. However, your lieutenant's in the house, and if they are within six inches of an opening, which he could fire out of, they are. You're easily. So they're at plus one. So. So ten minus two plus one, you end up with a nine or less. You passed, you lose a pin, and you take the order. Well, you can, you can, but you may not want to. So, so the lieutenant. Um, the lieutenant is going to go down. Okay, the lieutenant goes down. So now the last German dice, I believe there's how many left? Three. Three German dice. So the so first. We're try to fire the medium. So there, bet. Uh, down to one man, though. So, um, so it's first off, you got to make the morale check. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> all right, we will pause while there is a restroom break. Um, yeah, we've, to bring that Panzer one to straight up here and <laughs> we've seen most everything happen that would happen in this game. We have not seen a. Uh, close combat. Nobody's done close combat yet, but that's coming soon. <laughs> I, I'm 100% sure of that. There will be close combat next turn. Um, we've seen a unit um, fail an order check and run away. We've seen a unit fail an order check and go down. Uh, we've done some basic vehicle stuff. We haven't done any vehicle versus vehicle, but you're not going to see that unless the, the only thing I have is Panzer really unless the Sherman like chases down the Panzer one. Um, German units can have Panzerfaust, which means they do have anti-tank weapons, but they're not in a position to Panzerfaust right now. So we're going to try and fire these guys. They're veterans, so normally on a 10, they got two pins, so down to eight. They make it, yeah. so they lose a pin. Lose a pin, but I will be minus one because it's the last guy alive on this. And you will be minus one because of the pin. Yep, so minus two overall. So minus two. So you need fives to hit the Pathfinders. Shots. Five. Need fives. No. No, wow. Know. Five hits out of six shots. All right. Uh, Pathfinders take a pin. So now we're going and they five. need fives to wound. I used up all my fives. So right. we got one six. six, so that could be acceptable. No. no. Uh -huh. One I guy died. So one guy goes away. That's not half that unit. They stay there. They don't have to make a morale check or anything. We're going to try. They, that was very fortunate for the Pathfinders. They could easily have been lost. These guys, so they're minus two and they're regular. So they're down to seven, but they're within six. So they need an eight or less. Need an eight or less. Need an eight or less. That's two order dice. You almost pulled a Larry. Nope. Holy cow, they fail and go down. Um, 
what will the lieutenant do? What is the, what is the brilliant plan for the lieutenant? Don't blame him. I would run. I don't think I would stand out there in the open. Yeah, I wouldn't worry well, too much. It's hard much. to kill veterans with a sniper. It's like if they're regulars, it's pretty easy to kill stuff. But once it's veterans, it's hard to like because you got to roll a three and then a five. So I just couldn't resist a shot at the lieutenant. In the open. Oh, yeah, right. It's amazing. I made the same shot. <laughs> it's amazing how how much a difference it makes between needing a four and needing a five. Dude, yes. It goes it's from 50% to 33%. Like it's a huge drop in, in the chance to hit, and it seems like you just never can freaking do it. All right, what's this, turn four? That was the end of turn three. This is beginning of turn four. At the end of turn three, the U.S. has three victory points. The Germans still at zero, but I, I think they're getting close to one. That won't help. Germans get the first die, so... Things can happen. That's the thing, though. Like, I don't even think that I care about those kind of targets. Mm. I think I just advance into the woods and shoot the hell out of these guys. Like, I shoot the heck out of these guys. I think that's because I can't assault across that. So. You, and it's I, not rough terrain. It's not. Yeah. No, we never established the woods is rough terrain. We just, oh, so they're, they're light terrain. cover. It's the rough terrain's so on the rocks. You can assault through that. Heck, you can yeah, assault. Within six, though. That's the you, thing. Can, you can assault through rough terrain if you're within six, even. Yeah, if I'm within six. No, Are you within six? Because otherwise, I get to shoot my shooter. Because otherwise, he will get to shoot I'm at you. I'm going to try to advance oh. and save the close combat for me. Oh. <laughs> Dude, I can't just walk into a bar. And <laughs> <laughs> All righty, the Germans are going to advance into the uh, woods. Pass an order check, which I'm world famous for already. So I'm not doing, and these are uh, regulars with a pen. So, so you need eight. Got it. They pass. They lose their pen. They We're gonna go advance. You need to leave at least an inch between them. <laughs> if he had charged, you were going to eat his lunch, I think. But Yeah, I, I wanted to charge. Well, yeah, well... Not necessarily. All right, so I think we have. I think we have another thing. I think we have, we're gonna shoot the hell out of your guys. All right, so we got two S and G shots, and then we got one, two, three rifles, and then we got five shots out of the LMG. So you're at point blank with everything. Yep. So point blank and move will cancel on the LMG. Yes. And so that'll be on threes. Point blank and move will cancel on the rifles. So those will also be on threes. And then the SMG will be on twos. No that is correct. So we'll do the SMGs. One hit on the SMGs. And then these guys are all on threes. All of those hit on threes. Minor earthquake again. But all that hits. So. Uh, Fives for that. So, whole lot of dice need fives. One, two, three, four, five. Six. You, there are more. There's more damage dice there than you have dudes. That unit is dead, and the Germans get an order die. I got one. We did it, boys. So it is now three victory points to one. And the next die out of the bag is American. Got to. Charge. <laughs> so, uh, well, to be fair, with the submachine guns, he has tough fighters. Like 
He's veterans. You are within six. He's already gone. He can't shoot you. You can definitely get there. Now, does this go not rough terrain? So you'll even get to roll first. So he does get to roll first, yeah. that's not rough terrain. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, so they're eight. So eight like, they're best. Oh, he found it. They go down. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, at least they're down. This is when I did it. Yes. Yes, so Germans order die. What will the Germans do? We're going to try and move this. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I don't blame you. So the dude with the machine gun is going to try to like drag it behind the building. Exactly. Um, uh, we, we're a veteran, we have one pin, so we need a nine. Needs a nine. Got it. I'm a seven. They drop their pin. Get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> He scuttles off behind the wall to try not to die. Uh, I thought that's what you were going to do first. I was like, God, it's on it too. Yeah, I needed that charge. I'm afraid you draw that machine gun and smoke yeah, it down. Yeah, yeah. Wow. What's the chance of So, Germans again. I have not had the initiative. We'll try to. American advance stalls. Horribly. So that German unit that has not advanced the entire game due to being less than brave. I can measure to make sure this is outside of six. Inches. You absolutely can. That is allowed. So they are outside of his six inch range. So seven or less. Six. You did it. They lose a pin, and they actually take an order. Which is a novel concept. So those Germans finally get into the fight. Maybe. <laughs> or at least get up behind the woods so they're not standing out there waiting for the tank to shoot them a lot. I believe, which is what they're trying to do. So now those Germans have moved slightly. So the next order die. Next order die. America. America. What you doing? The United States is going to kill stuff with a Sherman. <laughs> probably. Yeah, I'm going to give my Sherman an advanced order. Let's see if I can clear the trees to get around and shoot. Yeah, you'll have line of sight at least one guy, so you'll be able to shoot for sure. Especially if you move up and. You, if, at some point during your move. Yeah, at any point. So you can pivot now if you would like. Because I think you're outside my full mounted arc. Right. Is it? I think, yeah, I think he's actually, I think he's actually in. Yeah, I think he's actually in it. I mean, feel free to pivot. But if you would like to pivot, you are way, more than allowed to. Right. Well, I actually, I think I'm going to leave it in just where it's at, just in case. Okay. It leaves, my, it leaves me a little more better for next turn, I think. Okay. And then I'm going to risk it and dump all my machine gun fire again. Okay. Even though I'm close. They're going to have light cover. Well, they can't go down, so I could nope. drop the uh, cannon on them. That's only going to be a two inch. Two inch should get like get three, five. maybe four. Yeah, four or five guys. You set them up a pretty smart way. I don't think he can get five. All right, so 
I can still use two machine guns and this uh, cannon. So I can shoot the holes and the pencil. I just can't shoot the. That would that would make you that would make you open top. Yeah, I'm a little close for that. Now. So I'm gonna shoot the whole machine gun and the cannon at the squad. Okay. Whole machine gun and the cannon. Okay. So uh, let's do the cannon first, just for because it's awesome. Yes. Uh, let's so do that. Minus one, so because of move and minus one. It is gyro stabilized. Uh, is it a veteran? Uh, no, it's regular. Never mind. Sorry. So not gyro stabilized. Uh, so I wish it wouldn't put that on there unless it actually had it. For, uh, cover, right? They're all these right, one for cover. So five on your main gun. It needs a five. Five. Oh, you're sick, man. That is a hit. <laughs> so let us see how many. Three. Two, right there's my bed. That is uh, four. Four. Yeah, I think four. Yeah. That, I told I you. Say, could, I'm pretty sure he could get. At least I told you he couldn't get more than four. He just barely could get four, actually. All right. Four hits at. And they're regular, so anything but a one, right? It's uh, it's plus two, two pin. Plus two, so anything, yeah, anything but a one. Yes. So three, three guys. Three sixes, two. It's, it's, a, sh it's, a, it's a shame the HE doesn't doesn't yeah, do anything with the. However, you do now have. Uh, pins for D three. D three pins. Yes. Uh, no, it's a medium. Five. five. Yeah. He's, he's five. And I need five. five. Still need fives. Uh, for two? Yep. And these I need fives, right? Still yep. need oh, five. No, fours. 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 Two. Germans finally starting to most. They do not take any more pins. Was that half that unit? Yeah. If you add the main gun and... Right. It's all one instance yeah. of firing. Yeah. So if that was half that unit, they are now going to have to take a morale check to see if they so run away. Two. Seven, but they're within on their I think they're within now. I think they need a, I think they need an eight or less. Yeah. Eight or less or they run away. They made it. They've all of a sudden got the bravery. You did it boys. They just need a few homies to die. It's apparently. Um So it is an American die again. So this rifle squad is going to fire at your That is will go down. So um, you are probably in uh, check the range. So you need at least a six. Maybe a seven if it's long range. So the bar and the rifle at long range, the LMG is at short. So the LMG needs sixes. The bar and the rifle need super sixes or sixes followed by sixes because they, the number has reached above a six. One six, possibility to hit. No. No hit. And then the LMG needs sixes. Did you cut that out? Holy cow, two hits. Needs fives. No. Woo, dodged several. Yeah. Dodged several bullets there. So, what's up? Where we at? Americans do another. All right, American dice. Sniper is going to, uh, so the trees still block line of sight, even for the sniper. And, uh, yes. Lieutenant. Is in line, as you can see the lieutenant. Uh, Just barely, but you can see him. Yeah. What's the range on the sniper? Uh, you got it. You're in. Range. 12 to 36. Yeah. The question is, is do I want to divert? You need a four. You absolutely could shoot the mortar team. You have line of sight. 
you would require a that lieutenant's not as important. Four. Right you would require a four to hit the mortar team as well. The mortar team, I'm going to double check the range. Case. You're good. Yep. You're good. You require a four because there's only two of them. So four misses. Misses. Yeah. <laughs> the Americans get another die. Americans are going to fire uh, You can see those guys. Mortar at mortar. Okay. Uh, you can do that too. Or no, you know what? They're closely packed. Mortar at uh, squad the tree. Now hold on, let's before you do that, I want to remind you uh, yeah, minimum's only twelve, so you can probably do that. What? What are we firing? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, you're definitely you're good. You mean the mortar is gonna fire at them? The dudes in the trees. You need a six. Nope. That's not a six. Now you need a five. If they don't move, they should move. Um, well, they might move. <laughs> Depends on whose die comes out first next time. They're going to try to bring the Panzer on one more time. So now the Germans are going to try to bring the Panzer on for the umpteenth turn in a row. Uh, Panzer one finally comes on the table. If we had got to turn six and ended the game and it hadn't come on, it would have counted as a, a victory point for the, the Americans. So the one danger of leaving things in reserve, if you can't get them on for some reason. Yeah, I'm just going to come on over here. Now, Panzer one just has a couple of medium machine guns. Okay, that's two turret mounted medium machine guns. We are in range of two. But we're at long range and two. So if we get 12 shot, it's still shooting them. Yes. Do you wish to go there? Uh, two medium machine guns? It'll be 12 shot. Yes, we are going to go down. Right. That seems reasonable. So you will need sixes followed by sixes. There are at least four opportunities for a hit to be made. No hits. No hits. That is the opposite end of the die right there. So that howitzer has gone down and still exists. German die. <laughs> the, the backwards advance. I like backwards advance. Um, eight to six. He's making sure he's within the minimum range. With the, he's out of the minimum range. He would not have been if he had not backed up. Believe me, I've missed several shots with that for being inside. I got some PSD here. All right, so, so looking for a six. No, that's a miss. Okay. On a five. On a five, definitely. All right, and you have your lieutenant rival. Okay. So, what does your lieutenant have? Do you have a pistol? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah like I said, I, like, I was going to put a sub on him, but it was metal. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, well, I, got, I don't get a choice. You take a plastic one, glue it to his back, and it's, uh, and it's now on the model. Yeah, that's true. I just, like, I think I, that was, like, my second army. So I okay, like, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm making yeah. suggestions to yeah, help that's you. That's a great idea. Like I would anybody. So the, the thing is, one of the nice things about us having a, a club we meet the first Saturday of every month, the Peculiar Game and Hobby, is that there are people that will give you advice about how to do stuff. Um, we have a lot of those, and, and sometimes you just don't think of something. And this, this, this is one of those cases where it's like, hey, just stick it on his back. You got to pull this one. No, 
Okay, this is a big die. Big die coming out here. American die comes out first at the beginning of your turn. Is this turn six? Turn five, okay, one more turn after this one, because we're only going to six. So the American Pathfinders are going to attempt to charge the Germans in the woods. Or in the palm trees. Passed. Now, in hand-to-hand, -hand, one important thing is that since you are fighting for your very life, pins do not matter in hand-to-hand. -hand. So that's an important thing to know. Now, those Pathfinders have submachine guns, which are assault weapons, which give them tough fighters, which means for, for every wound they do, they get another roll. Just, it's just once, so they could theoretically kill four guys. You do not roll to hit in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Since they charge, they get to roll to attack first. So two dice needing fours, correct? One hit, and you get another roll. Two. Two guys die. So now the Germans get to attack back. Four dice. Do you have a submachine gun? So roll the lieutenant separately. Need a five. Got a five. Gets another attack. Nope. And your three other guys need fives. None. So you lose one guy, Larry. However, the Germans have lost the hand-to-hand -hand combat because they lost two guys, which destroys that unit and will give the Americans another order die from the Germans. I lost half my units. Yes. Um, they're still stubborn, so you still take it at full dice. And he makes it. Um, I'm going to confirm that he actually needed to make that check, but he made the check, so it doesn't matter. But this is a that was crazy, yeah. special, special assault right there. Yep. Pretty exciting. Assaulting can be kind of astounding. I mean, you do get to regroup if you would like to, Larry. Did you do that? Yeah, don't get too far over. So for those that have played other games um, where you might get bogged down in assault, there is virtually no assault bogging down in bolt action. Assault is resolved at the time. Because you rotate the turret. Is the pedal mount is also 360 if you you yeah, can actually do that with, with yeah. So like if you want to fire one medium at my lieutenant or two mediums at the lieutenant or one at them, but by well, the time I'm not going to clear them, so I was hoping I could fire back. And yeah, you're not going to clear that. You want to pull up, turn around, and just nuke that unit. Yeah, that's exactly what makes sense. All right. All right. Um, so what do we fire one more? So the American tank is going to fire... Measure to see if you're within six. I think you are. Yeah, he is. Um, the light cover from half of them being in light cover is going to cancel that. 
the mood is going to be, so you need fours to hit with the, it? The main and this? Yeah. Above. Yeah, so a four for the cannon. Uh, that would be embarrassing. Four for the cannon. Oh. That's a hit. That's everybody. You're good. Uh, yeah, that is everybody. We like to confirm. Four hits. So one dude's still alive. He takes a D3 pins. D3. Two pins. And now you have five. It's medium. Yeah, five machine gun shots. You need fours. Three hits. Need fours. It does kill him. That's the end of that unit. And that will pull another order die out of the bag for the Germans. Yes. I don't think I can possibly pull enough units in a because all I have left is a one man medium machine gun. Yes. And a light mortar. So unless we just want to finish out this turn for giggles and learnings, I think we can probably call it again. Yeah, I think I, I, I mean, I'm fine calling it, but if you guys want to play it out, I'm well, fine calling it. Well, since there's not going to be any vehicle on vehicle, well, there might be something firing at a vehicle. Um, so can the howitzer see to shoot him? Uh, you could theoretically advance, rotate, and fire. Yeah. Let's go ahead and finish out the turn just to see if the howitzer can get a shot at your, your panzer. Because that's the one scenario we haven't had, a vehicle getting hit. I mean, I'm not trying to perform the game. I just think it would be good if we get a shot at it and the howitzer can do it. No, you're pretty much. I had a Panzer Faust in that unit, so that was my only shot against the Sherman. Right. So, so there's going to be minus one for moving, long range. 30? Yep, need a five. Oh, Four, oh. did not hit. We may go ahead and play that six round because then that Sherman can drive over there and do a horrible thing. <laughs> What'd you do? Oh, uh, whoops. <laughs> whoops. There's a, there's a lot. Okay. So the Americans can go again. Normally we would call this game, but I think we're going to play it out just to get to some tank to tank combat because. Snipers tough. Um, snipers are very swingy. Sometimes they're great, and sometimes they're like, why did I spend 50 to 65 points on this, this dude? Panzer is going to. So it hits on five, but it's 12 shots. Might be less a howitzer here. Does it have a gun shield? No, that one doesn't. Ouch. Not that many hits, really. Only four hits. It is regular. You need fours. So you lose one guy. So that howitzer is still functional. So German die. See that thing? So we're going to advance. They can.
Now the question is, are you far enough away? Just barely, but you are far enough away. Now I've just got a six. <laughs> <laughs> now just a six. Nope, that's a miss. Well, that thing only has like a what, plus one pin? Right. Might rattle the door a little bit. American die. Well, your mortar can't see his mortar, and your rifleman can't see his lieutenant. Those guys. Um, the machine gun is in short, the VAR and the rifle are in long. So it's long range. So they're going to need sixes followed by sixes. Three. That's going to need sixes. So that's one hit, and then the other three shots need sixes followed by sixes. Not even in the vicinity. No, another pin. He is racking up the pins. Need six. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> day is not your day. That's both guys. It's, it's, yeah, it's, you need threes to, to kill them. They are dead. You can't, you can't be mad about that stupidity. Man, that's incredible. Holy cow. That, that mortar's been phenomenal. I, I, that's just, that is fantastic. Oh, he's got his gun. He's lugging it around. He's, I understand. And we will go to turn six just to see what happens to the side of that Panzer when that Sherman fires at it. So that is the end of turn five. Now, normally this would be the end of the game because the Americans have an insurmountable lead at this juncture. But, <laughs> but yes, the back-to-back -back World War champs. But to illustrate the final point of a vehicle shooting at a vehicle, hopefully something will hit the Panzer one and wreck it this turn because everything else. So who comes out first? Red die. Yeah, activate the Sherman. That's not how that works. So the main machine gun, you're going to shoot the lieutenant, I assume. Let's start there because happy fun times. So, so ten shots on the lieutenant. Would you like to go down? No, he's gonna die like a man. Might as well. <laughs> you needed uh, fours. No, he didn't move. Small, small team. You needed fours for small team. That's the only thing you needed. He is finally. Finally dead. All right, now the man. Yeah. Uh, it is a medium. It's a 75. He did not move. You are in short range. You need a uh, three. <laughs> So 
the chairman doesn't blow it up. So, okay, let's call it here. Yeah, let's let's do this. Do let's pretend like the Sherman hit because there we go. It's a five he hit. Woo So a plus five. So plus six. So you need to beat a six to penetrate. So not a one, please. Two. So it's only one on the damage table. So the vehicle damage table works like this. If you roll a one, it stuns the crew. If you roll a two, it's immobilized. If you roll a three, it's on fire. If you roll a four or better, you blow it up. You blew it up. So that's how that's how tank tank combat works. Um, that was brutal, and uh, it would have been a little less brutal if we stopped than we should have. But um, but the uh, the U.S. still is uh, undefeated by Germany in world wars, and. That is the basis of both action. It took a long time. We went through a whole lot of things. But I hope by explaining it made it a little better. And for those of you that are in the peculiar area that are interested in both action, especially after watching this video, um, demos can be arranged if you call the store. Um, they, they will get with me and we'll get you a both action demo so you can actually play the game yourself and see if it's something you would be interested in getting into. Uh, thank you for listening, and I hope we didn't screw too much stuff up. I think we looked up everything and got most of it right. It was a good game. Uh, I'd like, like to thank Larry and Jacob for playing, and Larry for filming. I'm Brady, so when you call for a demo, you want me.